Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining why one of the worst mistakes you can make as a Hashimoto's patient is trying to DIY or self-treat. So why would you try to treat your own Hashimoto's? Let's dive into that for a second. Well, I can tell you the, the big reason I see people trying to do it is because they're frustrated, right? Uh, they feel bad and they're frustrated. They're frustrated with the doctors they've seen that either A, don't seem to believe that they still feel bad, uh, or B, uh, are offering them pretty dumb advice. <laughs> uh, so that's why a lot of people reach for books and video courses and seminars and some much to try to treat their own autoimmune disease. Now, I've been doing this for about 20 years, and I can tell you, yeah, I've run across some people that have been able to kind of, you know, hit a home run and, you know, take vitamin D or change their diet, and it completely changes everything about how they feel, and that's great. But the vast majority of people that I come across anyway uh, have tried a little bit of self-treatment, and they got overwhelmed, uh, or they tried self-treatment and they made themselves uh, worse. So I understand why people want to self-treat. I get it because you, you probably had a hard time finding a doctor that seems to know what they're doing or you've already tried working with a doctor and it didn't work. And I think a lot of this comes from the fact that kind of the, the typical timeline or, or what happens to a Hashimoto's patient is kind of like this. Usually about seven to 10 years before they finally get diagnosed with Hashimoto's, uh, they start to feel bad. And it could be they start to gain weight, even though they're uh, kind of eating low calorie and exercising, you know, doing that kind of stuff. Or they start to get uh, changes in their GI system, like they get maybe bloating or constipation. Or they start to get some anxiety or depression or hair loss, or some of the kind of the typical things we think of as, you know, low thyroid symptoms. And so those symptoms kind of drag on for a little while, and then uh, maybe they get diagnosed hypothyroid with the standard kind of blood tests like TSH and free T4, and that's fine. But most of these people that get diagnosed hypothyroid, they never get checked to see if they have Hashimoto's. And you may ask yourself, well, why, why is that? Well, it's because for 99% of endocrinologists, they don't care if you have Hashimoto's. They don't care if it's an autoimmune reason why you're hypothyroid. They just know you're hypothyroid. The only... Uh, a uh, hammer they have is the hormones, and so they give you the hormones. And look, I'm not against hormones because, look, you probably need them, but that's just a small percentage of what has to be done. So you might get diagnosed hypothyroid, you get prescribed Synthroid or Armour or something like that, and the years go by and your dosage has to go up because uh, the symptoms don't get better. And then finally, you probably get to a place where your TSH looks okay and your T4, T3 looks okay, but you still feel bad. And then your doctor says, hey, you're normal. You know, um, I don't know why you feel bad. Maybe you're just depressed. Maybe you need to take an antidepressant. Uh, maybe you're eating Snickers at night when you're not supposed to. Maybe that's why you're gaining weight. I've heard a lot of really just ridiculous, offensive things that doctors have told their patients. And so maybe finally you see a doctor who says, okay, I'll test to see if you have Hashimoto's. And they find out, hey, your thyroid peroxide antibodies are high, your thyroid globulin antibodies are high, but they don't do anything different. <laughs> I'm seriously, the vast majority of endocrinologists that uh, treat Hashimoto's patients, they don't say anything about diet. They don't say anything about supplementation because of a lot of reasons I won't go into now. And so that leaves the patient, though, feeling kind of like adrift, lost in uh, like a, you know, the desert. Like, well, what do I do? Like, I feel bad. Something is wrong. Uh, and they say, well, you know, you should go see the gastroenterologist. You should get this, see the psychiatrist because, you know, they learn the book and chat. They learn the body in uh, uh, chapters. And so I get it. You get frustrated. Maybe you go see a well-meaning practitioner who doesn't do any lab tests or kind of a, a natural healthcare practitioner. And they'd say, well, you've got a parasite and you've got a uh, fungus and do a bunch of treatment and it doesn't work. And then you go see another doctor and they say something and then it doesn't work. I understand that. And that's why I think a lot of people reach for self-treatment when it comes to Hashimoto's because they've already tried some stuff and it didn't work. Now, alternatively, there's some people that just I've never tried anything. They're like really anti-medicine or whatever, and uh, they're looking for a way to treat themselves. I get that too. The problem though, and listen carefully to this, the problem with like the books about treat your Hashimoto's or uh, Hashimoto's, you know, uh, cure or the, the online video courses you can take is all of that stuff, even if it's written or directed by people who are well-trained, have experience, it all has to be very, very, very generic, very dumbed down. Why? Because they haven't met you. They don't know your history. They don't know your case. They haven't done any of your labs. And so all the recommendations they give you are going to be very generic, like take probiotics, take digestive enzymes, uh, exercise, sleep, right? Uh, take vitamin D. 
And that's cool because you might just get really lucky and change your diet and take vitamin D and man, everything is better. But I got to tell you, people, humans are a lot more complicated than that. And yes, you may have the diagnosis of Hashimoto's, but you got to remember Hashimoto's is an inflammatory problem and it causes lots of collateral damage in lots of body systems. It can affect your liver, your muscles, how you make energy, uh, your GI system, your blood brain barrier, right? It gets very complicated. So yeah, you might get lucky by doing one or two of those things, but here's the other problem with those courses. Yes, they're super generic, which means it's going to take you a lot of time to work your way through all those generic recommendations because no one is like, uh, you know, leading the boat. No one's guiding the ship. Uh, you're also, they may tell you to do tests, but you're going to spend a bunch of money on tests. Some of the tests I bet you don't even need. That's one of the problems is you're getting sort of the most, uh, you know, generic uh, trial and error approach you could possibly have. And if that's what you want to do and your eyes wide open, that's fine. But I come across a lot of people in my practice who've done that. Or they got halfway into it and they just got overwhelmed. They're like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not trained. I'm not a doctor of any kind. I haven't had any training and I'm reading a book. So worst case scenario, you're going to spend months working your way through all those recommendations and you're going to spend money that maybe you didn't need to spend. Um, and that's not efficient, right? It's not targeted. It's not tailored. The other worst case scenario is you don't know, I guarantee you, you don't know your immunophenotype. Like none of the doctors, none of these books are telling you that you need to figure out what is your immunophenotype. So what is that? That is basically what is your immune system fingerprint that makes your Hashimoto's unique to you. And here's what I mean. You can give me 100 Hashimoto's patients, right? They've all got Hashimoto's, they've all got antibodies, but they're all individuals, right? They all have individual lifestyles, individual experiences, and individual backgrounds, which makes their immune system unique to them, even though they have Hashimoto's. And unless you know what that immunophenotype is, uh, you cannot support them and treat them as specifically and as targeted and as tailored as is possible. And the downside of that is you could take something that's in one of these books or one of these courses that'll make you worse. I've seen that a bunch of times. Uh, I've got some other videos kind of on uh, taking immune boost boosting supplements and why that's kind of a, a bad idea unless you know your phenotype. So again, I'm not trying to be like the prophet of doom here, but I'm just trying to bring a, a sort of a reality check and let you know, I get it. Look, you know, you, you feel bad. You're frustrated with the care or the lack of care you had. You want to feel better. But trying to DIY your Hashimoto's care is like, it's like trying to replace a blown engine in the car you drive, right? So let's say, you know, one day you wake up, you try to turn your car on, it makes these terrible noises, there's smoke pulling out the back, it doesn't work right, and you say, hey, I think my engine's blown. You take it to the car repair place, and they say, yeah, we tested it, your engine's blown, uh, and they tell you how to fix it. But instead, you say, you know what, I think I'm just going to read a book on how to do that, <laughs> right? Uh, could you do it? I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you could do it. I mean, the odds are not good though, right? The odds are it's going to take you a long time to fix that engine, a long time, uh, and you're probably going to make some mistakes, and you might even make a mistake that just ruins the engine for good and makes it not repairable. Now, am I kind of overstating the case? Sure, but you get the point, right? I understand that you may think, well, there's no doctors that know all this stuff. There are. Trust me, there are doctors that know this. Don't give up. There are doctors that understand all the stuff that I've just said. There are doctors that understand all the stuff that I talk about in my videos. They're there. You got to find them. But what I want you to not be shy about, and I want you to be an advocate for yourself, and I want you to ask questions. Don't be shy about interviewing people. Say, hey, what tests do you do for Hashimoto's patients? How do you decide what test you're going to do? Uh, how do we know if I'm getting better? How do we know if I'm getting worse? What do we do if I'm uh, getting worse? DIY self-treatment for Hashimoto's is way more complicated than these books and courses make it sound because it's inefficient, it's generic, uh, and unfortunately you could end up hurting yourself. I'll see you next time.